Hello, I am Leticia Diaz Rivera, broker and real estate advisor for Coldwell Banker Riveras. And today we are here at our Coldwell Banker Todos Santos office, visiting Alvaro Colindres, our top producer of this office. Hello, Alvaro. Hello, Leticia. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you, likewise. And uh, thank you for this opportunity. My pleasure, Alvaro. You have been with us for 15 years and have been recognized with many awards. Among those, the International Diamond Society last year. Yes. And the top producer for a number of transactions. This is uh, wonderful. I want to congratulate you. Thank you so much. It's, it's quite an honor to receive these awards. The most prestigious award is the recognition of the President's Circle Society. And I have a copy of the letter here where it says your exceptional sales performance has earned you elite recognition and ranks you among the top Cogwell Banker independent and sale professionals across the globe. We're excited and proud to present you with the Coval Banker International President's Circle Award which is right behind me. <laughs> Congratulations, Jorge. Thank you, thank you. And uh, also, um, we did have uh, a first place for a number of transactions for Total Santos and Pescadero, and company GCI top producer uh, for the company as well. So that was a two for, for last year's awards. And there's other awards uh, that um, I'm running uh, out of space where to put them. But uh, it's nice to receive them. And my favorite award is this uh, Apple Watch that I got last year. Uh, it's the perfect color, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it reminds me all the time just to, to be present and do a good job. <laughs> so, Alvaro, let me ask you, what got you into real estate? Well, that's an interesting question because I had never thought about getting into real estate, but it was a matter of being at the, at the right time, uh, opportunity. It was a time, 2006 or seven, when the MLS was forming, and uh, I started up with a small boutique real estate firm. We were very busy and, and they needed to hire another agent. So uh, they approached me in Canto Real Estate, where I had the good fortune of working with some architects and builders, and that's where I met Lisa Welsh, mm -hmm. uh, who became my mentor, trainer, and my co-listing partner. Uh, and she taught me how to do real estate the USA way, because she's a licensed realtor in San Diego. And the MLS was forming, so it gave uh, more credibility for uh, real estate uh, professionals. And uh, so that kind of got me into the real estate and my background in hospitality trained me well for this position because uh, I have a degree in restaurant, hotel and restaurant administration, so I have the culture of service ingrained into me. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have a degree, uh, English degree from UC Berkeley. I'm fluent in both languages. So it seemed like real estate was the ideal profession to apply my skills and also I was a professional photographer. One of the first photographers in Todos Santos to use off-camera off flash. Our firm, the Encanto Real Estate, shut down around 2008 during the, uh, the housing crisis in the United States. And then you had, uh, Cole Banker had another office. Yes. And then you moved yeah. to this office. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we interviewed with you and we got hired. And then uh, Lisa and I, along with Dan Benetti, who was a, uh, the, the manager at the time, the office manager, we dominated the market for, mm -hmm. for a good 10 years. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, um, so that's how I got into real estate, uh, just by being at the right place at the right time, seeing opportunity and seizing it. And what do you love most of Todos Santos? It's the physical location, one. It's a literal oasis in the desert. Whether you come from La Paz or Cabo San Lucas, you have to drive through the desert, and all of a sudden you drive into town and there is this sea of palm trees. So that was one of the things that made me attractive to uh, Todos Santos, but it was a kind of a serendipitous way of, of getting here because my partner at the time had a, a student who was taking care of a, a patient in San Francisco in hospice, and he mentioned that he knew someone in Todos Santos, a well-known artist named Catherine Wall. And then I noticed uh, Todos Santos appeared in the travel section in the San Francisco Chronicle in the pink section. And then, uh, so we were looking at that and it was one of those miserable summers of, I mean, uh, winters of January of 2000. And so we need to get out of town. 
So uh, we booked a trip and it was a short flight, like two and a half hours, you know, to get here. We had to go across any major oceans or across any uh, continents or anything. And mm -hmm. we came here and uh, uh, my partner, Rupp, uh, loved it instantly. And I wasn't too thrilled about it because it's like, it's this dusty little Pueblo and then what am I going to do here? Uh, so it was the people that brought me and also uh, the, the oasis, the oasis, the, the palm orchard. My native homeland is El Salvador, so I've got like the tropics in my blood, you know? So it's the, that, that tropical feeling, that magical feeling sometimes that you get here uh, during the summer when the light becomes just so golden. It's, the light here is unlike any other place. That's why so many artists and photographers come here because of the quality of light is so golden here. A little more northward, the light's a little more blue, but here the light is like this perfect golden color, especially the sunsets are intense. My first night here, we stayed in a horrible place our first time because we were looking for a place to do retreats. But that night we had dinner at the Cafe Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. Remember the Cafe yes. Santa Fe? Yes, yes. It's like... It was an iconic place. place. Iconic place and it was like a destination restaurant. From People came from around the world. I had no idea it was here, but Robert had made reservations at, at Cafe Santa Fe. If it wasn't for the Cafe Santa Fe, I don't think I would have moved here. <laughs> because they serve one of the most incredible meals I've ever had. And I said, if they know how to source the precious fish, organically raised beef, lamb, uh, the homegrown vegetables, uh, well-trained staff, uh, wine and spirits, the, the service was just precise. It was so consistent. I said, if this can be pulled off here, then there's something going on beneath the surface, you know? Mm -hmm. In order to procure all those ingredients and staff, you got to sit through a lot of layers to get to what Todo Santos is about. So, and that restaurant really made it, me think, okay, if they can do this here, there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of possibility here. So, thank goodness for uh, Paula Colombo and Chef uh, Ezio Colombo, the late Ezio Colombo, um, for that restaurant. And it's, it's no longer open, but uh, it's still, uh, it's one of, what was one of the main attractions that brought me here. Alvaro, tell me, why do you think people choose to live and vacation in Todos Santos? Well, I think uh, the people who choose to come and visit and live in Todos Santos have a sense of adventure and uh, exploring uh, the last frontier. So it's people who are adventurous who come to Todos Santos. Uh, the Todos Santos is a Pueblo Magico. Uh, which means it has special uh, designation for cultural, geographical, and historical value. I recommend that people come for at least a long weekend, a week, two would be ideal, to settle in, slow down, get used to the slower pace of life here, mm -hmm. you know, because it does take a little time. And since it's a small town, we have an actual church, a mission, one of the uh, 19 missions that go from Tijuana all the way to Cabo San Lucas, uh, Iglesia de Nuestra Señora uh, de Pilar. Uh, and it's, it's a community area for festivals, for rallies, and it's a town with a heart that has a center. And a lot of the cities and small towns around Southern Baja uh, are kind of more spread out, and it's kind of hard to find the core. Mm -hmm. and Within a short amount of time, you get to meet a lot of people, you know? And then you get to network and ask questions and who's your realtor and who's your builder and what was your experience. And the food is what really uh, keeps people coming back because we have some of the best restaurants in all of Baja, in this little town, this little funky, dusty town. <laughs> and, uh, and that's our main entertainment is, is the food. Um, after we've done our work, well, there are so many artists and professionals who work remotely now. And in the evening, they go out to dine and enjoy the, the fine cuisine that we have. And now we have lots of choices. Uh, it's not a far flight from LA, San Francisco, uh, Pacific Northwest, uh, Colorado, our feeder markets. You know, it's like a three hour flight. You can get here pretty quickly. And once people get here, they just settle in and, and discover the magic and uh, or feel the magic, you know? But it takes time. I love uh, this town. I love the culture of the, the local community. 
Uh, they're very kind, um, hardworking people, um, and they have this live and let live attitude. And I think that's the general culture of Mexico, you know, it's like we, we welcome people to Mexico. We're happy to see you here and have you here and partake in this beautiful place. And, uh, and I feel super safe here, you know, super safe. So uh, we have uh, good medical care. We have schools now, uh, more families here moving uh, with children. So schools have become much more important before it was known as a retirement community. And so now we have this diverse uh, uh, culture uh, which includes um, younger people with families who come here, have their own businesses, work remotely. Uh, we have people who are looking to retire or are retired wanting to buy and, and or sell now. Oh, yeah. Just a, a place to come and be yourself and relax and let go and, and see where the path takes you. Which are the most, uh, uh, neighbor, most attractive neighborhoods of Los Santos? Well, I'll, I'll speak about my neighborhood. Uh, I, I love my neighborhood. I live uh, on the way to La Poza, mm -hmm. which is uh, on the way to the lagoon, the freshwater lagoon on the west side of town. It's like halfway between downtown. We're in the Centro Historico here and halfway between the ocean and our freshwater lagoon. Uh, there's Colonia San Vicente, Barrio San Vicente, which is the, one of the safest places in town. And, and, and I love La Poza because it has elevated views, you can see the palm orchard, the oasis, you can see the lagoon, you can see the uh, mighty Pacific Ocean, you can see the town, you can see the mountains. Mm -hmm. So for me, La Poza is one of the best neighborhoods, but most uh, under-recognized uh, because it takes, the road getting there is a little bumpy, and, <laughs> and, and so you gotta drive really slow, which is a good thing, you know? Yes. It just, you, you just have to take your time getting someplace. Uh, but the most, uh, the most places uh, are coveted are Centro Historico, downtown. Uh, it's very expensive, very limited inventory. Mm -hmm. um, some places come on the market. Um, I sold it to Los Santos in uh, two years ago, um, both sides, and now it's being totally remodeled. And, uh, and my clients are buying property up in the central area. The other uh, most popular neighborhoods are La Cachora which is kind of like the Beverly Hills of Todos Santos, uh, where their early settlers in 1990 came and built these big homes uh, for their families and grandkids to come and visit. And, and then over time, the palm trees grew and they lost their ocean views. And, uh, and then those people um, started, said, oh, these homes are too big, so they sold the big homes, they downsized and bought smaller homes or built uh, lots and built smaller homes and but they didn't leave you know they stayed here but so that La Cachora is very very much in high demand um, and then San Sebastian also in high demand I just listed five lots there and they sold in three days oh wow yeah and um, that's amazing and, uh, and it's a kind of a little quiet seaside community it takes a little effort to get in and get out it's only one road in and one road out I think of, of all the neighborhoods, uh, Las Tunas is the most popular because Las Tunas is on the side of a gentle hill, hillside that just tapers down towards the ocean. So everybody has ocean views and that's where most of the expat community lives, uh, where, they have, where they build their dream homes. Uh, it must have ocean views, so if you're a place like from Nebraska, where you don't have an ocean, then you must have an ocean view. <laughs> And growth is moving northward um, towards La Pastora because now there's electricity out there. Uh, there's a really popular restaurant in a villa. Uh, there's a glamping site and electricity goes way out. And uh, at some point it stops. So all the neighborhoods are popular, but right now the growth is in Las Tunas um, because you know, there's now a new central or commercial district that has markets and restaurants and uh, little seat, uh, little uh, uh, pop-ups of uh, uh, little taco trucks and, and, and plants for sale and foods for sale and things like that. And that's uh, now on the east side of the, the main road, Las Palitas Road, is called La Orcadita. And that's now where most of the sales are happening because uh, you can still buy a lot there for 
if you can find one, <laughs> for about sixty to one hundred and twenty, hundred fifty thousand dollars for a lot. If, if you want something lush, tropical, you want to be on the ocean side of the road. If you like desert, if you views are most important, then maybe, and depending on your budget, you're on the mountain side of the road. And uh, but just about everywhere, uh, if you spend enough time here, you'll find your place and you'll find your neighborhood mm -hmm. and where you want to build your home and spend either the rest of your life here or at least a good amount of time here. Alvaro, what is the average price per square meter on the lots on these neighborhoods? Two to three years ago, we would give you an average price of $35 a square meter, mm -hmm. but now that is, is, is doubled. Um, uh, so we're starting at around $60 a square meter for, uh, for a lot, especially on the ocean side of the road. Uh, and that can go up to about um, $200 per square meter as well. Uh, just depending on the lot, if it's in Las Tunas, uh, the San Sebastian lots, one sold for $187 a square meter uh, ocean views and the smaller lots sold for $57 a square meter. On the mountain side of the road, you could probably find a lot for about $50 a square meter. Might have electric, but you'll need to truck in water. Interesting, thank you for the information. Yeah, and, and also the, the prices in, in La Posa are, are around $150 a square meter. Mm -hmm. uh, there's many lots up there and now, it's, since there's limited availability, the prices have gone up. And, and, and in town, um, you're, we're talking several hundreds of dollars for uh, a small lot per square meter. Per square meter. Per square meter. Wow, yeah. prices have changed in the last five years. In the, la the last five years, I would say that in the last five years, home prices have doubled. Uh, property values, land values have tripled. Wow. Yes. What is the average price per square meter of construction? In this well, we like to quote uh, per, per square foot, and uh, uh, we have our own building company called Rivera's Building, mm -hmm. and we just did a project for a client who bought a, a lot sight unseen. Uh, we designed the house sight unseen That's amazing. and built the, the, the home site unseen. Uh, it started off at about $140 uh, per square foot with everything they wanted, their wish list, mm -hmm. and then and then and then we had to uh, kind of adjust the pricing. So it came down to about $130 per square foot. So we're starting. I'm starting to quote at $135 per square foot with the res building, and it can go up to $200 uh, per square foot depending uh, what the lot is like. If it's a level lot or mm -hmm. if it's on a steep incline. If you're on the edge of an, of an arroyo, you might need a, a retaining, good retaining wall. And the finishes, you know, if, if you like simple finishes, it could be very affordable. But if you like granite, marble, and saltillo tile, and you know, high-end appliances, the, the, the price goes up. But I would say the average price, let's say $140 a square foot for most buildings. Very affordable, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alvaro, it seems like there's so much going on in Todos Santos. So if I am interested in buying or selling property, why would I choose you? Wow, that's a great question, Leticia. I'm a full-time, licensed, seasoned real estate professional. I live here full-time. I own my own home. And I have the culture of service ingrained in me with my training in hospitality. I'm totally fluent in both English and Spanish, verbally and in writing. So I've been trained uh, to be of service uh, to my clients. I don't want to talk too much about myself, but I would like to read you one review from one client and that pr pretty much sums it up. Uh, this is from a uh, sale I just made uh, this year, last year, and her name, um, a single woman who lost her husband, and uh, so I helped her through the process. So this is from Elizabeth uh, from San Diego. Quote, you may think that you are his only client that this level of focused attention and care that Alvaro will give to you and the process on which you are embarking to buy or sell your home. He will utilize the experience of many years and solutions confidently and shepherding the variables so that you can reach your goal in a timely manner. If a realtor with these qualities, knowledge and skill, someone who exhibits integrity, patience, communication, 
that is excellent and consistent, keeps you informed readily and often, who steps up and confronts any discrepancies so that you are protected. Sounds good to you? Then Alvaro is your man. <laughs> With all of the above, he helped me to sell my modest almond to Los Santos and leave it in good hands. Thank you, Alvaro. I appreciate uh, that you are and did on my behalf. May you have another prosperous year. So, uh, you can go to our uh, Google website, type in uh, Todo Santos, uh, Cobalt Bank Rivera's. There's numerous reviews, not only from me, uh, but for uh, the rest of our staff. Uh, and the, the other reasons is that um, most people know me around town, so you can ask just about anybody and they'll know me since I've lived here for 22 years. And not to mention that I, it's not just me you're hiring, you're hiring Cobalt Banker Rivetas, which is an umbrella of protection. You know, with over 100 years of building confidence and service, uh, which initiated in a 1906 earthquake with our founders, Colwell, Colbert, Cobalt, Benjamin, and Arthur Banker. And they set the stage and uh, for the real estate uh, franchise for Cobalt Banker, and we continue in their tradition of providing the best quality service for our clients. Not to mention, we have a trusted and recognized brand. And we are in service to the brand, you know? We are in service to the brand and providing uh, the best service. And what I love about Cobalt Banker is that it's a family-owned uh, company, and so it has family values. And those family values have a trickle-down effect down to us, you know? And, and when I mean us, I mean in our hearts, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a really uh, wonderful feeling for me. Thank you. And um, I also have uh, a support team. We have a team of attorneys, uh, accountants, civil engineers, structural engineers. We have uh, uh, home inspectors, uh, electricians, plumbers. Uh, we have uh, a lot of the support we need to help clients sell their homes, to get their homes ready for market. Uh, to educate clients uh, when they're ready to buy and make sure that what they buy is their investment is protected. So we, we do, you know, title reports, we use escrow, uh, just like the USA way. So I believe in cooperation versus competition. Um, I play well with others, whether it's my staff here in the office or 40 uh, team members in nine offices in Southern Baja, and also our competitors uh, around town. Uh, you know, we were the only franchise in Todo Santos in 15 years ago, and some small boutique for, for firms. But most of all, um, I love living here, you know, and I've seen the changes over the last 22 years. And I have lots of experience in, to share in buying a home and also preparing a home for market. For me, a home is one of the most precious commodities. Uh, think about it. Everyone wants and needs a place to feel safe and secure and feel loved. You know? So that is priceless. But real estate is an investment. So either way, it's a win-win situation. So whether you're a buyer or a seller, if you're my client, or if you're a client from another broker, it's win-win or no deal at all. So, my name is Álvaro Colindres. I'm with Cobalt Banker Riveras in Todos Santos. I'm here with my broker, Leticia Diaz Riveras. I have to say, um, you're such a gracious, kind, and firm person. <laughs> and uh, I have much uh, admiration for you and what you've created and, and continue uh, to evolve our brand. And thank you for uh, the coaching that you provide us. You know, that has really uh, helped, helped me a lot get through some stuck places. So thank you so much. No, thank you it's for a your dedication. It's thank a pleasure. You. Thank you, Alvaro. Thank you, Leticia. I want to thank Alvaro for being with us here today and for all the years of dedication to the brand and to our team. Thank you, Alvaro. My, my pleasure, thank you. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon with our next agent that we're going to interview.